Amelia Clark is a small person. The, the first time we saw her, she was two inches high. We were watching casting videos on a laptop in New York, and many, many, many casting videos, many, many fine British actors who were auditioning for the role of Daenerys Targaryen. They were each doing two scenes. One of them was a scene in which Daenerys finally fights back against her cruel older brother uh, and smacks him down, literally, with a heavy piece of metal jewelry. Quite a few actors did a good job with that one for some reason. But the second scene, uh, in the second scene, Danny prepares to walk into her husband's funeral pyre. Her confidant, Jorah, begs her not to, but Danny reassures him she knows the fire will not harm her. She doesn't know how she knows, but she knows. She gives a speech to her few remaining followers, promising to protect them and proclaiming herself the dragon's daughter, and then she marches into the flames. No one was getting that scene quite right. Uh, no one was projecting the religious certitude, the conqueror's charisma, the uncanny calm of a woman with a singular destiny that the scene demanded, and on which the success of the role and therefore the show would hinge. <laughs> and then we clicked on the name Amelia Clark. There she was, two inches high, looking into the camera and delivering that speech with an intensity that was almost unnerving. She was Joan of Arc, she was Lawrence of Arabia, she was the dragon's daughter. Our first meeting with Amelia was in Nina Gold's office, and it was a strange meeting. Based on her audition tape, we were expecting someone who was extremely intense. The woman who walked into Nina's office was not intense. She was relaxed, she was funny. When she laughed, her face transformed from that of a proper English person into an anime character. And, and that's not an exaggeration. If you were ever talking to Amelia when she laughs, her eyebrows literally turn upside down. We have never seen anyone else whose laugh turns their eyebrows upside down. And while it was impressive and remains impressive, it didn't seem very Joan of Arc. But then she performed the final scene again, and our certitude was as religious as Daenerys's. She was the one. Unfortunately, we still had to convince HBO. After the initial pilot we had shown them, their faith in our opinions was less than complete. <laughs> so Amelia flew out to LA for a final audition in HBO's corporate theater, which was large, dimly lit, and empty, except for us two, and the president of HBO. We were smiling, he was not. It was quite possibly the least inviting audition environment we had ever witnessed, and none of it mattered. She nailed that audition too. Still, the president of the company was playing it close to the chest. He nodded, poker-faced. Amelia asked if there was anything else she could do to lighten the mood. Uh, David asked, can you dance? And without missing a beat, Amelia did the robot. She, she did it with commitment. She did it well. Maybe she'll do it later for you if you ask nicely. And even the president had no choice but to smile. She got the job 10 seconds after she left the room and the two of us ran to tell her before she left the building because letting her get on an 11 hour flight home without knowing seemed like cruel and unusual punishment. And, and from her... From her first day of shooting in, in 2010 to her last day nine years later, uh, and all the days in between, she has been, she has represented the very best of the UK's film and, and TV talent. And that's why she's receiving the Britannia Award, or Britannia, 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 Britannia. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> which is meant to honor a person for doing just that. Uh, we despaired of ever finding anyone whose range and nuance, uh, what? One who can project, <laughs> this is hard. One who can project extraordinary power, ordinary humanity, and all the colors in between. She is the box of 128 crayons with the built-in sharpener, and she has only just begun. And that only covers what she has achieved on screen, which as amazing as it is, is only a portion of what makes her so singular. Uh, being cast in this role as a 23-year-old straight out of drama school was like getting shot out of a cannon. But in nine years, Amelia has never once lost sight of the ground. She's not about complaints, she's not about demands, she's about getting the job done and getting the job done right. Her commitment 
is unflagging, both to the work she's doing and to the people doing it alongside her. Uh, her basic decency runs right through to her core, as anyone who knows her can attest. She goes out of her way to make the day better for everyone around her. Oh. <clears throat> And if you'll allow a couple of American upstarts to stereotype your nation for one moment, when we think of British values, we think no-nonsense commitment and decency. Those two things immediately come to mind. I really suck at reading a teleprompter, I apologize. But those two things are a big part of what made the UK such a special place for us to spend 10 years. And Amelia embodies all of that and so much else besides. If Britannia was the goddess who came to personify the British Isles, we can think of no better mortal to personify Britannia than Amelia Isabel Euphemia Rose Clark. <laughs>